Hey friends, it is greenhouse building day. Well, let's be serious. It's probably going to be greenhouse building multiple couple of days, but we are finally moving some of this tarp to the side and we are getting all of our supplies ready. We're gonna build this thing and it's gonna be great. So come along for the journey. Before we get into it, I should also mention we are gardening in zone three in Saskatchewan, Canada. And so if you also live in a cold climate with a short growing season, you'll definitely want to hit that subscribe button notification bell. You know the drill. I also show up every single day on Instagram and Facebook to show you exactly what I'm doing in real time in my garden. So you know what to do in yours. So now let's get to it. Hello everyone. Today we're starting the greenhouse project. I've got plenty of material that I've been gathering up for the last few months. And I thought I'd take you through what I'm gonna to use to build this greenhouse and maybe more details on what each part does. So some of you watching might recognize some of this material and the greenhouse designs you've seen out there. This is going to be what's called a caterpillar tunnel. And it's gonna use these pieces here, which are the top rail sections of a chain link fence. I'm using the smallest size, inch and three eighths. And then I have a larger size, inch and five eighths. These ones here, these will be my posts. I'll cut them in half and pound those posts into the ground to be the anchor of the greenhouse. These ones are 10 feet long and I need two of them to make one hoop of the greenhouse and they'll fit right inside the posts. Under here in this box, this is the pl greenhouse plastic. I have enough to make two of these greenhouses, but I'm only going to make one this year. To attach it, I'm going to be using this aluminum channel. Green, the plastic will come through, sit inside this channel, and get locked in place by this. It's called a wiggle wire. How are you going to bend these hoops? It's a good question. Here you go. Thanks. I have here a hoop bender I purchased from Bootstrap Farmer back in the fall. So I'm waiting to use it. Pretty simple process. This is built specifically to make 12 foot wide hoops. You put one end inside that loop there and pull it so it bends around this arc continually until you've done the whole section of top rail, making one quarter of a turn for this size of greenhouse. Finally, we have some self tapping screws, tape, other sorts, odds and ends. And we have landscape fabric, which we'll end up using in the greenhouse to stop the weeds. So the greenhouse is gonna go right here, right in the first part of where we tarped out. We have 30 inch beds, 18 inch walkways, and 40 feet long. So this will cover three of those beds, starting at this corner, to about there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off all of these weights on the tarp and drag it that way until we open up the space. And then that way we'll also cover a bit more of the garden bed over there. So we're gonna get started now getting to work and starting this greenhouse build. Thank you. 
Okay, so the tarp is off over in the space that we want to make the greenhouse. First impressions, um, glad it worked. Definitely could have used some more time though. Um, over here, the grass, like it's definitely dying, but um, I know this type of grass, it's very determined. And if we don't pull this out or like cover it some more, it's definitely gonna come back. Another really cool thing was there's just sort of an earthy smell as we were uncovering it. So must be some sort of fermentation processes, weeds dying, things germinating. So yeah, definitely would recommend if you have a weedy space to try this out, but hopefully you will have more time to leave your tarp on than we did. So just for some perspective, this is what the weed pressure looks like in the spot that we didn't put any weed fabric on it. There, it's littered with weeds already. Super frustrating. So here's a cardboard drawing of the greenhouse. 12 feet by 40 feet, putting the hoops on four foot centers. So I'd even marked it out here. How many we'll need, and we'll need 11 if you count these up. So therefore I need 22 of these pieces, two per hoop. Four of these pieces will be for the center ridge line, and eight of them will be for bracing. So I have 34 of them to do. This is setting up a straight line right here. We'll take this piece rebar, set it over here, string a line between the two of them, and that's where we'll pound in all of our posts along that line. Somewhere right about here. This is our string line, which we'll use to set a straight line. And so you can, there's two ways you could set it onto a post. You could just tie a knot like I did before and slip it on. Or if you want, you can make it, pull this through the knot and then you have any size you need. So we'll set it right about there for now. Come with me to the other side. In order to get a straight line, we need to make sure this is as tight as possible. So what I like to do is I make a loop and twist it a number of times. Pull it once you're there. And now you can tighten it by pulling on this line. As tight as you can. And then you pull this back. You can see here I've got all the posts pounded into the ground. I leveled across using a two by six from that side over to that side. And using my string line again, I leveled across. So the top of these posts are all level. 
you can see the top of them get a little bit mangled from pounding them into the ground. Now I checked with my checked my hoops and the size, they'll still fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build everything and then grind off all this after the fact uh, and make it smooth so it doesn't cut anything. You can see how it doesn't take long even after you pull off the tarp for new weeds to pop up. That's why we mentioned before it's important to keep the tarps on for much longer but we just don't have the time right now. Here we have the bending jig for making 12 foot wide greenhouse hoops using fencing top rails. So my idea here is well, I'm not going to use the bolts that they gave but I'm going to use these heavy duty leg screws and screw right down into the frame of the deck here to secure it. In order to do that it looks like I'll have to drill out these holes a little bit more. There we go, it's all secured into the deck. It should pretty this should be pretty secure as it, it's lagged right into the into the rim board. And this one actually is going right through into a joist. These two are holding onto the to the deck boards, which isn't much, but it will still help. Okay, here's the first half hoop bent. It's going to take me a little bit to figure out a good system for it. The instructions say to mark nine inches off the end of the swage, the swaged end, and then do every foot and a half around there. And so I'll finish them all up, I suppose. Okay, the rest of the hoops are bent. But honestly, wasn't too bad. Definitely because it's just a manual system, pulling it by hand. There's going to be some variation between them. I mean, this is just a greenhouse. It's not going to be perfect. What it'll do, considering I spent about $13 Canadian for each one of these posts, $26 per hoop. It's not too bad. 